We're going to talk about percents. So to warm up, I have a which one doesn't belong. So looking at the little grid here, there's a reason why each one of those fractions doesn't belong. So you should pause, give that some thought, and see um, what you think a reason would be for each one. Now that you've thought about it, I'll give you a few of my reasons for a couple of them. So I was thinking that the one half didn't belong because it's the only one that's written as a unit fraction. Remember the unit fractions are like one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth. Um, two tenth is the only one that's not in lowest terms. And maybe thinking about, let's look at one more here. Um, five thirds, that's the only one that's an improper fraction. I also noticed that it's the only one that has a denominator with the three, and that three is gonna actually make it so it's the only one here that is not a terminating decimal. So were these similar to yours? Maybe you have some more. Reminder that our source is the which one doesn't belong and they have a whole bunch more there. All right, so we're gonna move on to a percent. So we've heard of that before, you've seen of this symbol before in your life, but what does it really mean? Well, when we see per cent, that really is from the Latin, from cent meaning 100. So we're saying for every 100 or per 100. And so you can see, that little rate written there, n out of 100, and n is any non-negative number. So when we see something like 50%, we know that that's really meaning 50 out of 100. So it's another way to write that rate where your unit measurement is always out of 100. So we're going to look at some 100 grids down below, and we're going to first write... Um, the fraction that represents the shaded region, and then we're going to write it as its equivalent percent. So give you a little bit of time to rewrite these. You should pause it and try. Now that you've tried, I'm going to try and count through these. Let's see, we have 10 lines here, so that's going to be 30. And then we have these guys here. Quick count. There's 7 by 6, so there's 42 that way so we're up to 72 and then I didn't account for that one row here that's missing one so that's nine more so we're gonna be at 81 hundredths so we can even write that as a decimal if you want to see it that way but it said just a fraction and equivalent percent so 81 hundredths that's 81 percent going off of the meaning of percent all right, looking at number two, if we count up all of those dots, I'm getting a total of 36 out of the 100, which as a fraction, that can reduce. This is really four times nine over four times 25. And so we can reduce this to be nine 25ths. Now as a uh, percentage, we needed the out of 100. So looking at the first fraction we wrote, that's gonna help us to write our percent, 36 hundredths is 36%, and then a reminder, as a decimal, that's 0 0.36. So one thing you can notice is that our decimal and our percents, a quick way to write a percent as a decimal, is to really divide by that 100, which moves us those two decimal places you could see. So let's try number three. If we add up all of those squares, I think I actually I'll count off the white ones because there's fewer of them. So as I'm counting those, I'll subtract that from 100. So then I could see that there were 36 of those. So a total of 64 are actually shaded then, which is 64 hundredths. But again, it wanted the percent. So 64%, 64 out of 100. As a fraction, we could reduce this. This is um, four times 16 which is four times 25. Again, the fours could reduce, so that's equivalent to 16 25ths. Moving on to number four, if we add up these, we're gonna get a total of 28 hundredths, which is 28%, and again, as a decimal, we could even write that, 28 hundredths. 
Um, we could simplify that fraction. This is again, likes that number four. So this will become seven twenty-fifths. All right, for number five, counting those out, we get 53 hundredths, which is 53%, and that won't simplify. And last one for number six, if we count those shaded, we're going to get 15 out of 100. It's so really 15%. We can reduce the 15 out of 100. That's 5 times 3 over 5 times 20. So we could say that's 3 twentieths. All right, when we flip the page here, we're going to look at some fractions that we want to um, write as a percentage. So if you saw on the last page, we were able to write the fraction and then convert that really easily to percents because it was out of 100. So one thing that we could do is either write the fraction as an equivalent fraction out of 100 because percent means out of 100. Um, we can also draw the picture to visualize that. So let's, um, I have 10 grids down here for us to look at. So I'm going to put number one in the first grid. So two fifths. Well, if we want to draw that, remember that there are 10 columns. So if I want fifths, I got to group two at a time. So there's my groupings. And so it says two fifths. So there's one of those fifths, two of those fifths. But really that's covering up 10, 20, 30, 40 squares. So that's 40 hundredths, which is 40%. We could also have said that two fifths, if I want it to be written as that percent, I can write the equivalent fraction to make 100 by multiplying by 20, which would get me 40 hundredths as well. For number two, we're looking at a half. And so a half here, if I just split this in half, you can see that I'm talking about this whole portion, which again, that's 50 hundredths, which would be 50%. Or we could take that fraction and write it out of 100, which would happen by multiplying by 50. All right, for number three, we're looking at eight tenths. Well, eight tenths, that's already broken up into tenths, so we want eight of them. So we're going to go all the way over, basically leaving two there. And this is the little section we're talking about, but that covers up really 80 squares. So 80 out of 100, which is 80%. For number four, we're talking about 17 twentieths. Now, twentieths would mean that we're going to have to take all of our tens and split them in half. So now you can see 20 pieces. If I'm looking at all the columns split into two, and so I should have 20 segments here to make up my whole, and it wanted me to have 17 of those. So I know the top half here is gonna cover up 10, and then 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And so you can see that I'm left with 3 times 5, 15 blank ones here. That would mean that 85 out of 100 were filled up, which is 85%. You could also have said, okay, how do I make this into an equivalent fraction out of 100? Multiplying by 5, 17 times 5 makes the 85 as well. All right, looking at number 5, we have 22 twenty fifths. So if we want 20 fifths, really what that's doing is breaking up four at a time. So those are gonna be 20 fifths. And I need to have 22 of them. So first I'm gonna mark them off so I can see my equal parts. So these are 20 fifths. So five by five, that's 25. And we need 22 of them. So there's five, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22. Or really quick, you could say 22 times four, which equals 88 of those hundreds. And you can see that's the part that's missing. Three times four is 12. So 88 hundredths, which is 88 percent. 
for number six, we're looking at three fourths. So if I split this up into fourths, that would be my sections there. And it wants three fourths of them. Well, each fourth has really 25 squares in it. So that's going to be 75 hundredths, which is 75%. Again, we could have written three fourths. We want it to be hundredths. So multiply by 25 and we get it that way as well. For number seven, we have three hundredths. So that's just three little sections there. We could say that's 3%. You can tell that's tiny compared to the whole, which again, the whole would be 100%. All right, for number eight, we have one eighth. And so we want to try and rewrite that. So I'm thinking about eighths. Well, there's a couple different ways that we can break this up. I had four, sec four sections a little bit ago, so I need to take half of that. Well, half of that would mean taking the 12, 25 and breaking that in half, that would be 12.5. So if I kind of split it, it looks a little funky, but if I split it like that, that would give 12 and a half to each one. Do it again here. So that's our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. And so we want one eighth of that. So that's really, again, 12.5 out of the 100, <clears throat> which would be 12 and a half percent. We could also have tried to rewrite this out of a uh, power of 10, because this is really um, 1 eighth is equal to 1 over 2 to the third. So if I multiply by 5 to the third over 5 to the third, it's going to be 125 over 10 to the third. But that's 125 out of 1,000. So if I want 100, I'd have to turn it into 12 and a half. All right, for number nine, we have 13 fiftieths. 13 fiftieths. And for the picture for that, really that's grouping two at a time. And so if I have 13 of those, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of those. Really that's 26 of the hundredths. So we could say that's 26%. And then lastly, for number 10, if we knew that, let's see, number 10 was 3 eighths. So if we have, we already know what 1 8 is, and so really we can just triple that, 3 times whatever 1 8 is. So if 1 8 is 12.5%, then this would be 37.5%. Or again, if you broke it up, you're thinking that it's going to be one of the 12.5s plus another 12.5, and then we have another one. So you can count up all of those together and we get 37.5%. Okay, flipping over to the next page, um, you can actually click on the fraction worksheet if you want access to more things like this, um, but I have this kind of printed here for you. So what we wanna do is write the fraction and the decimal and the percent. So a little bit more practice from what we were just looking at. Um, so for question number, um, for the example, we have 16 hundredths, so that's okay, counting all of those spaces, which again, you can write it as 0.16, which is 16%. So again, more practice for you. So you could pause it and try and fill in all of these to compare the fraction, the decimal, and the percent. Okay, now that you've tried, let's see. The fraction of the shaded would be 57 out of 100, but again, that's 57 hundredths which will be 57%. When I look at number two, now these are broken up into the column one, so those are tenths, so that's seven tenths, which I could write as a decimal, but then that's gonna be 70%, because really this is 70 out of 100, because each bar has 10 in it. For number three, we have nine tenths covered up, that's gonna be 0 0.9, which is again 90%. And then a reminder that 9 tenths is really 90 out of 100, which is the same as 0 0.90. So these are all equivalent fractions and equivalent decimals. And really all equivalent to each other overall. So for number four, this is actually 5 tenths, which is half, or we could say that it's 0 0.5. We could also say that that's 50%. For number five, we have one, two, three, four columns. That's going to be 42 hundredths. 
you rate that as 21 fiftieths, and that's 0 0.42, which is 42 hundredths, and that's 42 percent. Here again, we have columns. There's three of them. That's three tenths, which is 0 0.3, and that's going to be, again, 30 percent. This is equal to 0 0.30 if you want to write it as 30 hundredths. Again, all equivalent to each other. For number seven, we're missing four. So in order to make 100%, that's got to be 96%. But that means we have 96 out of 100, which reduces. It's four times 24, four times 25. So we get 24 25ths. And our decimal, again, 96 hundredths. For number eight, we only have one bar. That's 1 tenth. 0 0.1, and that again, 10%. 0 0.1 is 1 tenth, but we can write this as 0 0.10, which is 10 hundredths as well. But we'll stick to the simplified. For number 9, we have 68 of those filled in out of 100. That's 68 hundredths, or 68%. We can go back and reduce the fraction up here. This will... Um, Divide by 4 again, 17 times 4 and 25 times 4, so we get 17 25ths as our simplified fraction. For number 10, we almost have three full rows. We're off by 1, so that's going to be 29 out of 100, 29 hundredths, or 29%. Can't be simplified. Number 11, we got 8 of these tenths, so 0 0.8, which is 80%. 0 0.8, again, is 0 0.80, 80 hundredths. But we like our more simplified fraction, which actually reduces to 4 fifths. That's completely simplified. All right, just a little reminder on here. We're going to look at some application problems, but we're going to use words like 40% of 70. So just to remind you, we have seen already two-thirds of 70. Well, that just means two-thirds times 70. So if we're looking at 40% of 70, it's like 40% times 70. But we can actually rewrite this into our more familiar fraction. That's 40 hundredths and multiply it by 70. That's going to be 2,800 divided by 100, which is 28. Or another way is to rewrite 40% as the decimal, which is 0 0.4. Multiplying that by 70, remember we can just multiply 70 and 40, we get the 2,800, and then we need two decimal places. So that gets us 28 as well. Now, a percent bar can be used to model what 100% of a number means. And we've done the little bar and modeled with it previously when we were talking about proportions. Because really, we're setting up proportions here. If we're going to ask for 40% of 70, we're looking at the rate compared to out of 100. So we know 40 out of 100 is supposed to be some number out of 70. So there's our proportion. So this bar is numbered off. I'm going to break it up. So these are percents. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way up to one whole, which will be 100%. So if I want to look at um, the comparison with the number 70, I'm thinking about the whole being equal to 70 as well. So if I take the 10 and break it up 70 divided by 10, that means each of these little bars is really going to be worth 7. So if I want to know what 40% is, I need to look right here, and that's equivalent to saying 7 times 4. That's going to be 28. So 28 is 40% of 70. Another way you could do it is actually just solve the proportion like we've done before. 40 out of 100 equals x over 70. You can say this is 40 times 70 equals 100x, which is 2800 equals 100x. Divide by 100, and you can find it that way as well. You still get the same 28. Let's try that again. In a class of 30 students, we have 60% are girls. So again, we have 60 out of 100 for one of our rates. Um, that's supposed to be equal to, we need a class out of 30 students. So the 
girls out of 30. So I can make my little number bar here for my bar model. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you draw nine marks, that makes 10 bars. So that gets us to 100%. And we want 60. One, two, three, four, five, 60. So this is what we're concerned with. That's 60%. Well, if the hole is 30, then that really means each piece of our bar is going to be 3, because 3 times 10 makes the 30. So quickly I can see that if there were 6 sections here, 6 times 3 is 18. That means there's going to be 18 girls. I'm just kind of estimating really quick. If it was half the class, that would be 15. So a little bit more than half the class are girls, which 18 makes sense. Again, you could set up the proportion. You could also check out 60% of the 30, which will end up being 1,800. And then again, two decimal places because we had two decimal places to begin with. Or we could work with the fractions. Either way. All right. It says that Allie scored 25 out of 28 on her test. What was the percentage correct? So 25 out of 28. So we actually have one of our ratios here and we wanna compare it to a percentage, so out of 100. So the question is how much out of 100? So we can set up the percent bar, but I think it's easiest right now to set up the proportion. And we can solve this. We know that 25 times 100 is going to equal 28x. Well, this is 2,500 equals 28x. If you divide by 28, it looks like 2,500 divided by 28. We're going to go 8 times, which if we divide, let's see, 8 times 28 is going to be 224. And then we do some subtraction. That's 26, bring down a zero. Let's go one extra time. Nine times 28 ends up using 252. This leaves us with eight. And then we're gonna have to start breaking that up into parts. So we bring down the zero on that. So the 80, that's three. Three times the 28 will be 84. That's a little too big. Let's see, so if we just do two, Times, that will be 56 and so 80 minus the 56 leaves us with 24 one more zero for fun so let's see 28 I'm sorry 240 if we divide that by 28 it happens eight times eight times 28 uses up 224 again and so this is going to kind of keep going so I'm going to say it's about 89.3 all right, for the next example, the number of students in class that turned in homework was 22. So 40% of the students, so 22 out of the whole class is 40%. So if we're going to solve this, let's call the whole class that number of the x. So we're again, we're going to say 22 times 100 is equal to 40 times x. That's 2200 equals 40x. Divide by 40, divide by 40, that gets us x equals 55. So there are 55 students in the class. Okay, we got another one. An iPad's on sale for $360. The original price was 400. What percent was discounted? So actually, if it was 400 and now 360, the discount was $40. So if we want to know 40 out of the original price is what percent? So out of 100, that's the question. So if I solve the proportion, 40 times 100 equals 400x. So 4,000 equals 400x dividing by 400. We end up that x is equal to 10. So we know that it's going to be 10%. Now, if you didn't think about the discount and you were just trying to figure out, well, 360 is what part of 400? You could have done that as well. But you would not have been finding the discount. You would have been finding the percentage that they actually paid. So again, if I multiply 360 times 100, this is supposed to equal the 400x. 
And so we have 3600 equals 400x divided by 400 divided by 400. We end up that 90 equals x. So that's 90%. So this is how much you paid of the original. That means that 10%, that would be your discount percentage. All right. Um, for this last page, we're just doing a little bit of mental math, and this is actually one of the skills that is really good, and you probably already have a little bit of, like when you're shopping, doing stuff like that, buying something on sale. And so you try and relate things to stuff that you know. So, for example, if you use fraction equivalents, that's one thing that happens when you see the 50%. A lot of you guys start to think about that as the half off. Or maybe even the 10%, and I use this one a lot, that's um, meaning that I'm taking one-tenth of it. Some people might even use 33 and a third, that one not so common for me, but really that just is equal to one third. So if I ask you to find 50% of 80, really you could just say, well, that's just half of 80, which is 40. If you ask for 10% of 80, that's just one tenth of the 80, which is really saying just divide it by 10, that makes eight. Now 33 and one third percent of, let's make this a little bit different, make it 90, a little bit nicer. So really it's saying what's one third of 90, which is going to get 30. So if we can convert these percents into some kind of more familiar fractions in your head, it can make um, you be able to do a little bit more mental math. Now, another thing that you can do is use a known percent. So this is the one I was saying. I use the 10% a lot because I can take one tenth of stuff in my head. It's really just dividing by a 10. So if I ask you to find like 55% of 80, again, 55%, not so comfortable, but if you have 50 and five, those might be a little bit more doable. So 55 is made up of a 50% and a 5%. So if I'm gonna do that of 80, really that's asking me to take 50% or half of the 80 and then 5% of the 80. And so again, you can write this as fractions, decimals, whatever makes you most comfortable. And so I'm gonna go back really quick. So it was 50%, so I'm gonna write them as decimals. You can go either way. Decimals are fractions, so 5% is actually 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 of the 80, I'm still not so familiar with that one, but this is gonna be 40. And then I know that 5% is half of 10%, so what if I do half of 10% instead? That might be a little bit easier. So I know that 10% of 80, we already did that, is 8. So really it's just half of that. So 5% is half of what 10% would be. That's 40 plus 4. So we would get 44. Again, trying to relate to things that are a little more familiar. So like 90%, one way to think about that actually, is that that's 10% of a whole. So if I take 10% of the number, let's work with 80 again. So 10% of 80, which we already know, is eight, we just need to take that away from the whole. So our whole was 80. So 80 minus the eight means, I'm thinking about like a sale, something's 90% off and it was 80 bucks. You're only going to pay um, the eight bucks, but really what you got taken off was $72. For 20%, that's like two 10%. So I think about that like two times the 10% of, let's do 80 again. So 10% of 80, we already know that's eight. So two times eight would make 16. So that's just gonna be 16. So that's kind of the way I use some things um, and your book showed you some similar methods. Um, what are some ways that you do that? Think about some things on sale. How do you calculate 30% off? If you don't know, well, here's some other strategies for you.